Nicola Motor has held its fair share of press attention this year, from the outlandish claims made by its co-founder and now former CEO, through to the Hindenburg Report and Gravity Gate, when Nicola admitted that video footage of its Nicola One quote, in motion, was technically a video of a glider truck rolling down a hill, powered by nothing but gravity. Then there was the issue of takedown notices against YouTube channels, all of whom were using Nicola-supplied media B-roll, something I'm still trying to get my head around today. And of course, then there's the deal with General Motors, announced just before Hindenburg Gravity Gate, and those takedowns hit the headlines. That deal, announced at the start of September, was a deal that benefited General Motors far more than it benefited Nikola Motor. It would help Nikola Motor refine its hydrogen fuel cell and battery electric vehicles by essentially providing access to its in-house fuel cell stacks and then recently announced Ultium battery packs. The fuel cells and battery packs would be used in both Nikola's large Class 7 and Class 8 big rigs, as well as planned smaller vehicles in the future. In exchange, Nikola was to issue General Motors with $2 billion of stock, equivalent at the time to about an 11% ownership in the firm. And that September deal would have seen Nikola pay General Motors to manufacture the Nikola Badger pickup truck, a vehicle that GM would, quote, engineer, homologate, validate, and manufacture. The cost per vehicle? Well, whatever Nikola and GM agreed was cost, uh, plus a markup for GM's trouble. Fast forward a few months, and as Nikola's already low credibility has nosedived off the cliff, its former CEO has seemingly vanished off the face of the planet, and its stock price has tumbled away towards an almost inevitable appointment with the pink sheets, things just keep getting worse. And today, Nikola got another major blow. It announced that it has renegotiated its deal with General Motors regarding its future plans for both battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And it's cancelling all production plans for the Nikola Badger. In a press release issued at just before 5am Pacific this morning, both Nikola and GM announced that they'd come to an agreement about their future work together. They've signed a new Memorandum of Understanding, which I should note is legally non-binding, that replaces the earlier agreement from September. That agreement no longer mentions the Badger pickup truck, and since Nicola says GM's involvement in that program was essential to its success, the Badger is now officially cancelled, with Nicola stating it will reissue any deposits made by customers for the vehicle. It doesn't say when that refund will take place, and it's still on the company website. Anyone who's been paying attention to the car, uh, truck crash, or maybe that should be hydrogen explosion that's been Nikola's years to date, will most surely not be surprised to see that this particular vehicle has been cancelled before it's even rolled off the production line or even been issued a public appearance as a prototype. Why? Let's take a look. And then we're going to try and figure out where we go from here. And as a side note, we're only featuring the few static images of the Nicola Badger that we have, that we have rights clearance to use because their press team emailed them in press releases. But the rest of the Nicola footage, well, because you know what would happen if we used theirs, we're using our own, captured at Nicola World 2019. First up, not a single one of Nicola's vehicles have entered into production yet. Not one. And the crazy valuation it received before it entered onto the stock market through a special acquisition corporation, you know how I feel about them, was pretty much based on the number of reservations and commitments to buy, or worse still, more memorandum of understandings to buy that it said it had for the Nikola 2 and Nikola Trey hydrogen fuel cell trucks. That valuation also likely took into consideration the billions or perhaps even trillions of dollars that Nikola thought it could make transitioning the fossil fueled trucking industry to hydrogen fuel. Nevertheless, that valuation was based on maybes and best case scenarios, not actual vehicle sales. And let's not forget that memorandums of understandings, whichever industry they are in, are pretty worthless in most cases. And if you'll permit me, I am going to take a little diversion here into exactly how worthless they are before we go back to reasons why we're not surprised that the Nicola Badger has been cancelled. 
Memorandums of understanding, MOUs, are fairly common in the business world. They're essentially like telling your kid that if they're good and they eat up all of their greens, then maybe, just maybe, they can have ice cream for dessert. Or that maybe, if the weather is good this weekend and you get out of bed at a reasonable time and the roads aren't too bad, you might go for a family drive to the coast. The thing is, they're always contingent on other things happening, usually due diligence on the part of each signatory, and while they can be legally binding, they usually aren't. They're essentially a form of business etiquette that says if everything goes right, then the parties involved will get around to formalising things at some point in the future. And they can encompass everything from a company or a product purchase through to collaboration agreements, takeovers, acquisitions, and much more. It's essentially a promise to get around to getting the lawyers involved and building up a legally binding contract in the future, if everything goes okay. For a vehicle manufacturer to get a big order in the form of an MOU, well, it's only worth everything if that MOU is backed up by a signed vehicle purchase order later. And while the MOU is usually the start of negotiations that lead to said signed purchase order with legally binding stuff in it, well, it might easily just come to nothing as well. The same goes with regard to the agreement between Nikola and GM. Until that MOU becomes a signed and sealed contract, then there's not a lot either side can do to enforce it. Sure, it signals that both parties are serious about working together, but things may blow up and go south pretty quickly. And I think that's how we came to today. GM clearly decided its previous MOU wasn't working anymore, and so it negotiated a new one, which again is pending more formal contract negotiations. With all of that out of the way, let's get back to detailing why I am not surprised that this is happening. As I was stating, Nikola hasn't yet produced anything other than prototypes, and when it comes to the Nikola Badger, we haven't even seen that. Literally, it's showcased nothing. People were putting down deposits on a truck that hadn't been shown in any form at any event. Originally, Nikola had said the Badger would be unveiled at Nikola World 2020, which was due to take place in the spring, and then it was moved back to later this year, and then it was cancelled completely. But I don't think we can blame Nikola for that. After all, it is no more responsible for the Covid pandemic than I am responsible for snow on Mount Hood in the winter. Let's just say, however, that this particular delay either helped Nicola delay the inevitable, or maybe if you're feeling more charitable, gave it some extra time to try and get a functioning vehicle together. And the final reason that I'm not surprised and feel that this was inevitable is the history that Nicola has of grossly overpromising and grossly underdelivering. That in of itself is not unusual in the startup world, especially with cars. Automakers old and new have been caught out in the past promising things for their vehicles and then having to backtrack it, be it features, launch dates, design, or in the case of plug-in cars, how far they'll go per charge. But Nikola's plans have constantly changed, and in the case of the Nikola NZT, completely and utterly scrapped without a trace. And I suspect, although I don't know for sure, the same is true of its reckless military vehicle and that jet ski with a 4K display it liked to call the Nikola Wave. Spelt WAV, of course. In short, none of what's been announced today surprises me. And with Nikola pretty much straight up admitting it needs General Motors fuel cell technology to do anything at all, well, I really do think the likelihood of it bringing anything to market anytime soon is somewhere between slim to snowball in hell's chance. When Nikola announced its goals for the Nikola 1 and the then Nikola 2, it had very few competitors in the electric and hydrogen fuel cell truck world. Tesla was really its nearest and only rival, and unlike Nikola, whose vehicles appear to still go through any kind of meaningful testing, Tesla has been using its semis out and about on its own delivery fleet, with Tesla semis spotted all across the US being tested, often pulling a car transporter full of Tesla Model 3s or Model Ys. But now it's not just Tesla that Nikola has to worry about. Peterbilt and its sibling firm Kenworth are respectively producing test fleets of both electric and hydrogen fuel cell trucks. 
Toyota has expanded its hydrogen fuel cell programs with its truck division, Hino. Volvo recently announced it would begin series production of its FNR Class 8 electric big rigs early next year in Virginia. And up here in the Pacific Northwest, Daimler's Freightliner is rolling off the production line in small but meaningful numbers as California and the rest of the West Coast pushes ahead with its plans to build the I-5 electric corridor for big rigs, just as it did for passenger cars nearly a decade ago. And now Nikola isn't the only company promising a zero emission future, well, things are looking pretty grim. GM has essentially got it by the short and curlies. It can use Nikola's potential custom to help it spread out the cost of making its own hydrogen fuel cells and drivetrains if Nikola actually builds trucks. But other than that, well, it's most certainly in charge, which is why perhaps GM's share price dropped by 2.5% today, Nikola's fell by nearly 27%. And it's worth much less than when it entered the stock market just under six months ago. Will Nicola survive this year? <laughs> Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.